hello and welcome to the demo today. I'm going to try and get right to it. As soon as I verify that my um, iPad and all this stuff is working like it should, um, I want to get going and not waste any time. I hope everybody's doing okay. Last week we talked about um, last week we talked about collaging with this tissue paper that we've been having so much, well I've been having so much fun making stacks and stuff. See all these pretty pretty papers? I've had a ball with these and I wanted to show you guys sort of how to how to use them. Now we've made all these paper, what are we gonna do with it? Well we cut out two layers of, of tissue paper here and made sort of a ball mason jar. And these we're gonna try and fix it so that these look like they're in the jar in a little bit. We've used tissue paper here and fabric here and this is um, ink tents, Derwent ink tents pencils, which are literally ink. I mean, they're you you think you expect them to feel kind of painy or chalky, but they're not. They're literally ink, and they're so they're they're very watery. Um, you can reactivate them with water. Um, they don't turn your water mucky as you as you use them. Your your water stays pretty clean. They're kind of neat. So. Anyway, okay, I got the, I think I got the iPad up. I think we're good. I can see things moving and I, okay, so we're going to keep rolling here, okay? Um, I will show you this. I found a, a box from some stuff I had bought and I just put all of these paper, tissue papers that I have painted and colored and stuff. They're all in here. Um, because you know they blow all over the place. They're they're hard to keep track of. And then if I need something, I can just come in here and sort of go shopping through what I have for what I need. Um, and this is why I like to color or paint on small pieces as well on scrap because um, everything will get used eventually. See, even the odd shaped pieces, I just go ahead and and design them. So. Actually, I kind of like that. That might be real pretty on this today. So let's get going. Um, like I said, I don't want to dilly-dally around. I want to get started. I want to continue on because last time it ran long and, and I don't I don't want you guys to be like, you know, two hours into this. I want to sort of knock it out today and get it done. So if you're in here and you can hear me and see me and if everything is good, please just say hello so I'll know that you're here and that things are working. And I appreciate that. Also, this demo is brought to you by Patreon. Um, feel free to uh, drop me a little note if you're interested. I'll send you the link. Okay, go and get started. I'm using, I've got several containers of water here. This is my, my big water bucket. It's got three compartments. I start here, clean my brush second in there, and thirdly in there. So by the time it goes through all that, it's pretty clean. I also have this if I need to dip into something I need clean water. Hey Mert, how are you? Good morning. Thank you. So you can everything looks good on your end. I guess you can hear me and see me, so we're good. Thank you for for saying good morning. Uh the thing that I love to collage with with tissue paper is I call this my top secret. I've lost some of my wording here. Top secret stuff. It's glue and water. <laughs> and it's, it's uh, if you keep it in a jar like this metal lid, don't shake it, um, just swirl it. Because if you get the glue all up in here in this metal lid, it's gonna rust and mold right around here. So I try hard not to, not to let, you know, um, stuff go. And you notice it's white too. You know why it's white? Because I've taught myself if I get glue out to paint, I, I dip and paint. I don't drag my brush on the lip of the jar because if you do that and you've got some green or orange in here, it'll run down into your glue and change the color. 
and it took me years to not <laughs> do this. It's like when you're cleaning a brush, it took me a long time to learn not to go because that just splats it everywhere. People that are sitting across from you and everything else. There's a learning curve to everything, right? Okay, so we're this far with this thing, and the next thing is to, um, I'll, I'll sort of review real quickly what we have done. Um, this is watercolor paper. I believe it is, let me look. Uh, I think it's 11 by 15. Are there, yep, it's 11 by 15 cans and watercolor paper. And sometimes I use this instead of a canvas because it is, it is, um, affordable and you know then whoever buys it can frame it or do what they want you know you don't have to, you're not obligated to uh, the canvas or whatever sorry I get a little hand lotion um hi I see Deb and Tracy good morning you guys um it's nice to see you we're just getting going sorry I had to stop and put lotion on between the wood stove and and uh, art my <laughs> my poor hands uh, you know how it is, winter. Winter! Okay. So, um, going to go over what we did. We just I just painted the paper a color, this soft color. Put down some pink tissue paper, another layer of pink to make the shadow of the jar. This is two pieces of paper. It's a piece like this over a piece like this. So it looks like a splattered jar. Uh, for some of these leaves, I cut fabric like so, like this, and just, and I just used my Liquitex Matte Super Heavy Gel to put that down. And the way I collage, whether it's with this for the skinny, thin stuff, or this for the heavy stuff, you put your, your uh, fixative, your, your um, glue down, put your paper or cloth down and then do the glue or, or whatever you're using again. So it's three layers. It's like a sandwich. Bread, meat, bread. Okay? Bread, peanut butter, bread. <laughs> so <clears throat> now something I forgot to cover. I did tell you just a minute ago that you can reactivate these. And I had forgotten that you know, when these get wet again, they will run. So when I put another coat of this on here, because what I'm shooting for with this, with, with anything that I do and I use this, is sort of a faux encaustic look. I really like encaustic art, but I don't like the wax or the smell or the expense or whatever. I don't need to buy any more different art supplies. I need to use what I have. But I found if I put enough of this on something, it gives it dimension. And it can sort of give it that soft, milky, ethereal look, which I love. And... um when I went to put this on, I told you guys when we finished last week that I would put another coat of that on here, which I did. And when I did, I realized, oh, as I paint through this, it was wanting to smear because it had not been fixed. You know, it was still open to, you know, being uh, reactivated. So what you'll do in a case like that is um, you can use the, I've, I've done this with the Posca pens. You know, I use these a lot. Okay, um, let me pull out, oh, what did I do with it? Just one second. I've managed to sit right here and somehow, there it is. Okay, I'm working on this one. And this is tissue paper and Posca pens and just a whole bunch of layers and layers of these pencils and lots and lots of glue and water. So after I paint my lines with the Posca pen or draw my lines with the Posca pen, I let it dry a while and then I go over it with this. Just quickly put it on. And that seals the Posca and keeps it from smearing when I do this. Now, this morning I was working on this one and I was putting this on, and lo and behold, there's a place over here that I missed. I did not do the glue and water on, and it tore it all to pieces. I mean, it really, it smeared. When I put tried to put the stuff on, it just smeared black all down through this yellow and everything. So I just took a baby wipe, 
and I got in here and I just I just while it was wet and I just cleaned it up right down to the paper almost so now I'm gonna have to go back and repaint that's okay it won't take long I can repaint re-ink and then I'll put some glue and water on it make sure I cover everything and then I'll go back and and correct it okay so and I just discovered this this week that the glue and water actually pr can protect see how well it, it protected this and I put the stuff on it and it looks it looks really um I mean I just love how that looks I don't it may not appeal to everybody but it's it's what I'm shooting for with this and, and I just love the soft look of this um and and the glue and water makes it possible to use Posca on things the Posca pens um on things and not have to worry about smearing when you seal why don't I spray seal it wouldn't that be easier I'm so glad you asked I don't spray seal my stuff because most spray sealers have a comment on the back of the can in the directions that say do not spray this fixative on your art or whatever if the humidity is above x amount well you know first time i read that i thought yeah 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 whatever and i went ahead and sprayed well you know what if you spray that stuff on your art a clear fixative you know polyurethane krylon whatever if it says that on the back of it and you go ahead and use it if the humidity is too high, it's the equivalent of spraying your art with light gray spray paint. It, your art just goes away. Um, I actually had a piece here that I ruined that way, and it's not in my sight. I, I don't know where it is. I would show it to you. But, but so, because of that, and I just don't like sprays, because I don't want to breathe them. Um, I like to use acrylic varnishes and things. So, da 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 That's all. This is connected to that, connected to this, connected to that. So anyway, so maybe with these as well, had I put the glue and water down. And the thing is, is you don't want to uh, sit here and, and paint like this when you put it on, because that will activate it. Dip into your glue and water and go one, two, three, and then get out. Let it dry. And that will, if you do it quickly and lightly and don't paint it to death, it'll... I'm, I'm betting because it does with the Poscas. It'll it'll seal that up, and you can come back later and put your heavy stuff on. Okay, that was a little a little involved, but it's something that I mean, if I'm using these pencils and showing you, hey, use these too, then when you go to seal yours, if they smear all everywhere, you're going to be hating on me. So I need to tell you when I run into these things, and and I make mistakes. You know, you can learn with me as I make mistakes and learn. You can be right there with me, and it's it's fun together. It's okay. I don't mind if you don't. So now we've got our background. Happy with that. Happy with, with, I kept happy with all of this. I kept this and this kind of simple because I want this to be the magic. I want that to be the happy part. And so what I've got to do now is I'm going to take you with me through my thought process on what kind of flowers are we going to put here? How, what are we going to, what do we want? Do we want, you know, um, Make made up flowers. We want. Well, the thing is, is the ball jar is pretty realistic. So should we have realistic flowers so it doesn't look disconnected? Or should we just do what we want and do wackadoodle flowers or whatever we want? I mean, we have options. And we do have some beautiful papers. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It's just, it's just so... Mm, something about that. Just love it. Um, I thought... I pulled this out because I thought this was a pretty color maybe for flowers and this is kind of my thought process it's kind of how I do just kind of have to take what we have and put it out and see how these colors look with all of this and you can think about the color wheel I mean okay so we've got a lot of green and a little bit of blue blue green so opposite that on the color wheel is red and orange like that also purple we could put a little purple in there and get away with some of that um I had originally saved this piece of paper thinking this would be a cool flower something like a poppy that's a possibility um I also set this aside thinking oh what a beautiful you know that could be really pretty in layers up there maybe with some baby blue um Maybe with that. Y'all can speak up too. I really, you know, you, you can tell me, oh, 
I, I'd like to see you use this or that or whatever. And I may or may not, but um, we could even make a flower out of each of these. We're not going to have a whole lot of room to make a whole grunch of flowers because it's only this big. Um, here's some fabric that I pulled out too, and I thought this was lovely. This would make a really neat polka dotted flower, and it's fabric. And it's easy to collage on, and that could be really pretty too. So there's that wackadoodle flower thing. Uh, wackadoodle flower theory. <laughs> hmm. Look at these. Um, these are so much fun. These would make really awesome leaves too. They look they look kind of like you know how you see gasoline on a mud puddle or something, and it, it's got that rainbowy reflective look to it. That's what this looks like to me. Look at it on that yellow. Isn't that pretty? It's just so pretty. Um, here's a little piece of purple if we want purple. See how nice that looks. Okay, I'm about to the end of the here's the, here's the one I pulled. Look at that. Okay, so let's get, let's, well, we could maybe put these together, but yeah. Um, this is the stack of stuff that we had out to sort of choose from, and I, I'm, I'm just in love with these oranges, and, um, that's the problem for me. I like them all. It's really hard for me to narrow it down, but I do, I do eventually, I'll come to something. Now see, to me, this is really pretty, this right in here. Also, as I hold this up, I can see, I've got the light from the window shining through it and I can see through it, whereas you probably are not getting the same. Let me hold it up there. There, now you can see what I'm seeing. See how pretty that is, the light shining through it? That's a whole different animal there. That's, you know, okay. I think there's some baby blue. Okay, so I've pulled out my favorite things. That's that's a good starting point. Now let's put all this aside and let's go through this little stack of stuff and have some comment, little discussion about what we want to do. And I did I did bring this too. <laughs> I didn't like it a lot. It could be a piece of fabric under the jar, but it's it's so busy. I don't know. I think it's too much. Okay, this is re really strong. So we're gonna just, we're gonna put this over here and say, yo dude, hang out, chill. Okay, really like these. This still gets a boat. I think these look nice together. I'm thinking maybe a couple of flower leaves out of this to accent the ones we have. There's pink if we need it. Does this, do y'all think this blue is really happy here. I think I do. If we need the center of a flower, this could work. Um, and purple. Mm, looks good with that green, doesn't it? We could maybe mix the purple and blue together. Right? Okay, one thing we need to consider if we're going to use tissue paper to collage is that when we put this down, whatever's underneath, Okay, let me put it here. Can you see the leaves under that? You can't see them too much right now, but when I wet this paper, you're going to really see these leaves and things underneath of it. So if it's something that I really want to stand out, I might, I might just paint the back of this white and let it dry and then tear it. I'm thinking out loud. I'm not I'm not sure. I know that I don't, it's so transparent, I know that I really don't want this to look blotchy. I want it to be a beautiful flower and I feel like it needs white behind it. I could also paint white like right here and then put it down. That's probably the most sensible thing to do. Um, I'm really thinking this is, I could make a thing to go under the jar with that, couldn't I? Gosh, it's cute. I'm a sucker for cute. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a few leaves out of this. And that was one of my rules with this, in doing this, is that I wanted to cut everything. Um, I didn't want to tear anything because it was a, like a challenge. It was like a condition of this, of this project. So I just wanted to 
use my, <laughs> I call them my snizzers, just use my snizzers and see what I can get here. So let's, okay. Well, that was my fabric scissors. I'm gonna go to fabric, I'm gonna go to scissor jail for using my fabric scissors on paper. Ah, don't tell anybody. I'm in trouble. Scissor police are gonna come get me. Deb says, interesting that you can make it opaque with the white. Well, you know, it's sort of like a um, a primer. You know, like, like when people paint a car or a wall or anything else, or a canvas, you know, th there's, sometimes there's a fair amount of that that needs to be done. And um, it's something to think about. And I, see, I think I could show you with this. Let me... Uh, let me do this. Here's a section of paper towel. And here's a leaf. I want to I just want to show you this. And I'm sure most of you that do art already, this is I might be insulting your intelligence, but this is for anyone who might just still be learning and, and need to see a visual for this thought. Okay. So there's this on white on that, okay? And now this. Do you see that see that line right there? This sort of will stop that from happening. And when these get wet, there it's gonna be very obvious that it's translucent. This will noticeably darker, you will see that line right there. If I put white, whether it's paint or whatever, behind this. It's gonna make this the color that we see here. It's gonna be so much better. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so there's some leaves. These are pretty, I think. I think these are great because they sort of are having a conversation with this jar. It's like they're the same technique or the same uh, media. So they are, your eye kind of goes from one to the other. And we can just put that here and let it hang down. See how pretty that is? And you know, if I'm doing it on, on this background, I may not have to worry about the white, okay? Because see, that's gonna be just fine right there. Hanging out on this yellow, it's pretty happy. So, I'm trying to find the best way to pick these up. And I, I, I do like, you know, mixed media. We do need to mix, um, we need to, put put these watercolor leaves with maybe the real leaves or the drawn leaves or whatever. Deb says it makes sense. I just never thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's kind of like uh let me think what I was I was just thinking about. It's like a oh, I'm sorry, dog just walked between my feet. Go lay down, Jin Jin. Go lay down. She's looking for meatloaf or something. I don't know. <laughs> She's always on the scrounge, on the prowl. Okay. Um, I had an example. Uh, it's like underpainting. I almost said reverse painting, but it's not. It's like underpainting. Um, if you wanted to do, say you had black paper and you wanted to do an apple, you could, you could paint a white apple and then put your red on top of it, and the red would be so vibrant. I hope that made sense. Maybe we'll do a demo on that. Ha ha. Okay. So, now the decision. What kind of flower are we going to make? I'm thinking that I like. Something like this. Just a whack a doodle. Happy flower. What do y'all think? Okay. So I'm going to cut a, the outline of a couple of those if I can. And I'm just going to, and I know they'll be kind of alike, but oh, 
I may have started these a little too big. That's okay. We'll adjust. Now, let's see. So there's three. This will work. This will be okay. They're supposed to be wackadoodle after all, so. When I say wackadoodle, wackadoodle I mean, you know, whimsical, um, out of the ordinary, imaginary. Um, certainly not something you'd find at Lowe's Garden Center. <laughs> Maybe in my garden. So see, those are kind of fun, aren't they? Don't you think? So there's two of those and they seem to be a little pale here so what we can do is pull out oh let's move this big old piece over here we can pull out that oh there was a pretty little pink piece that I had where did I put it mm, this is kind of pretty we can cut centers and put in the center of this and see how they look. Um, I'm going to cut two out of this just for grins and giggles. Come here. Ooh. Okay, so that looks a little bit muted, doesn't it? I don't think that's bright enough. Okay, so off you go. Maybe our purple. Tracy says very fun. I like wackadoodle. Me too. I subscribe to that on a regular <laughs> basis. Okay. Ooh, hey, maybe this. All right, let's try this. Let's cut a couple of these. And this stuff is so thin and fragile. It's like, oh, but it's so much fun. I've really enjoyed revisiting this these past few weeks, and I've been doing a lot with it, and I'm amassing this pile of paper here that I'm going to need to sell or do something with. Okay, that might be, the, that might be good. What do y'all think? But see, we're just cutting and sticking. We're just putting things down and just take a look and see, hmm, will this work? Will that work? Does this, you know, we're not committing to anything at this point. We are simply just exploring our possibilities. Okay. I don't know why I keep, I keep say, thinking I like this for some reason, but I think that would be too strong of a flower and it's just too... A little too much. I still think this would be a really pretty flower. Should we should we cut a few and see what we get? Hey, Mert says I like that. You like this? I love the orange. Oh, okay, I do too. I think I think that's a little more in keeping with what we kind of trying to do here. Now I'm going to cut a couple here. This takes just a second, sorry. Just have to take my time and but yeah, I could have pre-cut these, but I just want you to see the process. If I if I pre-do stuff, then when we get together, you're like, well, how did she do that? I didn't see, you know, and I don't know if you're like me, but I need a visual. I'm I'm do really well if someone will show me something. So Okay, I think I'm going to like these. I don't know. Let's see. I, I, I do like that blue. I do. Okay. And that might just need some purple in the middle of it. What do you think? How about that? Let's see, I'm making two of everything. So that's one way to save time. And it's okay that they're a lot alike. Um, you know, 
I mean, you could, if you want to, you could cut two the same, and then you could trim one down to make it just a little different. That would be okay, too. Is that too dark? I think it's, I, I think I'm okay with that. The purple there. Hmm. Okay. So there's four flowers. Mert says purple always works. You guys, Mert's a purple fan. She is a purple fan. Would this be a good flower? Hmm. Or flower center. Ooh. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe a little much still. Okay, well let's let's not forget I've got boxes and boxes and boxes. I've got all this paper. Look. <laughs> what kind of flower do you want? Really? Here's an O velocity piece. Hmm. This might be good. Let's see here. And here's a stripe. These are jelly jelly plate prints. Mmm. Lots to pick from. Here's some wackadoodle doodles. These might be good flowers. Anybody need any paper? Let me know. Oh. Poor little paper. I'm like, wow, what are you doing in here? You look so <laughs> lost. Um, I feel like I'm going to see something in a minute and it's going to hit me. And I'll be like, yeah. You know? Mm. You guys might remember some of these from our, uh, the demos where we made, we did papers. Remember these? There's Wackadoodle. Maybe two wackadoodle. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Well, I do kind of like that. That might be the thing. There's two colors that are very pretty. All right. I found two, three that might work. Five, <laughs> six. <laughs> okay. Now we got a lot, a lot to sort of shop from. Oh, I lost one of my flower centers. Oh, there it is. It's behind. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. There's a shot of that blue that I like. That could make a pretty flower or a couple of, like, maybe rosebuds. This is too strong. This. Mm. Uh, it's just not. There's that purple that I like. Mm. Okay, now this. This could be a fun flower. Put it right there. It's got our colors. And this could be a center. Let's try it, shall we? I'm just what if and I'm just, you know, let's just try this. Um, and instead of cutting two that are just the same, I am going to cut these different sizes because we want to have some variety in here, right? Just a little variety. So... Um, let's see what part of this I like the best. I do kind of like, you know, I think hamburger. <laughs> now that's always going to be a hamburger to me. Okay, we're going to cut the hamburger. I don't want the flower to be about this big. Is that too big? Right now. Just a little bit. dwarfs everything else. Maybe like that. 
that might work. Okay. So now this one we're going to cut. Okay, here's a here's a cutting trick, you guys. So I'm going to make I'm going to turn this circle and cut to the same part to the same location all the way around. And see, I've just cut this design. Now you can turn it over and cut like this. And it's that much easier to cut out. This is watercolor paper and it's very thick. So it's a, here we go. What have I done? <laughs> okay. Ta-da! Yeah, I think that works. I like it. What do you guys think? You guys like that? I think I do. And let's do... Mm, paper. Here we go. What I'm going to do for the center of that one is cut I'm going to use the uh, pinking shears to cut the center and I know I've wasted a lot of paper here I'm just sort of trying to get it get a nice little oval or circle or something I like it I think that works okay that's fun. That is fun. See, here's part of the thought process. This pink and these polka dots sort of talks to this pink. These watery looking flowers, uh, leaves, speak to the, the jar and the water and all this down here. And this blue gives you pop. And this purple ties with this blue and purple. So when you look at this thing, hopefully... Your eyes will take a, a travel trip around, you know, you just look at everything and that's what you want to do is have components here and there or here that are similar but different. And so the eye wants to go, oh, look at this. Oh, look at that over there. And it goes to, the eye is pulled to similar things. So you get a little, it's like taking a little journey here. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take the scrap. I hope that made sense, everything I just said. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Oops, turned off my light. Okay, so now I'm going to make a flower like this, but it's going to be like a side view flower, and it's going to be um, sort of like halfway open. I probably should do the same cutting trick because this is hard to cut this way. Oh, but I'm I'm halfway through it now, so I guess I'll I'll keep going. Okay, so this is like gonna be like a sideways flower. I can put it here. See how it that gives us some variety? So it's out that way. Alright. I'm gonna take this scrap and my Pinking shears again, and we will make a little. We'll make a little half of a. Yeah, we'll do this. Half a circle. For half a flower. All right, there we go. Ta-da. Neat, huh? You think that's enough? flowers and stuff. I think we're good. I think we need some more green in these places. And I might like to take some of this and just put behind where these are going to go. So, let's get started on this. Let's get started on putting everything down. I'm going to just put these up here. And we're going to do the, the tissue paper first because it's 
lightweight. We need the glue and water and get that down. I've got so many things. I'm like, wait, where's the glue and water? I can't find it. <laughs> Help. Okay, so I really need to probably remove these. Come over here, are you? These are, can be awfully hard to pick up. Here's a trick. Palette knife. Okay. It's that much easier to, to pick these up. Because you just can't, you know, get under them. It's just ridiculous. Okay. So here's some glue and water. And put that here. And I just want to put some of this down right in this area so that as we put our... I said I wasn't going to tear anything, but I did. Well, but this is going to be covered so it doesn't count. <laughs> okay, so all I'm doing is eliminating these spots where you can see just, just yellow. And that way it'll look like foliage and it won't be so naked looking. It'll make the bouquet look more full. So like this is our baby's breath, <laughs> right? Like a bouquet of flowers. Oh, here we go. So I've got, I put glue and, glue and water down and then paper, and now glue and water again on top. And it wants to travel. I'm gonna to have to remind it where to go. That little one piece is being problematic. Okay, so now that looks good enough to me. Now I wanna try and remember where I had the other leaves and put them. I think this one should hang down. That's a little much in the glue and water, but oh well. Another way you can pick up tissue paper is to take a brush that's got a little glue on it and you can touch it. And it should just pick up. Actually, I wanted it to be this way. But you can see, sort of plan it. Put it where you want it without having to get your hands all in it. I like the way that looks. It looks like watercolor, doesn't it? It's so pretty. Okay, I think we need... Where else would we need? Okay. I did it. I drug my brush on the jar. <sighs> what can I say? Human. Okay. So I painted over this green leaf, and then when I painted here, it put green over here. You do have to remember that, that it's bleeding tissue paper. So you have to be very aware of where you are putting, you know, what you've put down and that kind of thing, because you, you don't want to... Uh, what am I trying to say? You don't want to have a big old green smear in your background. Unless you do. If you do, fine. Get down with yourself. I don't, really. This is sort of a precise little thing here today. So I'm sort of being persnickety. A little bit picky. I want a, a, a watercolor leaf up here. You just need that. Um... Have you guys ever heard the phrase like a two candlestick person or a three candlestick person, that kind of thing? Like if you have a mantle in your house and you have candles on this mantle, are you going to have one candlestick on the right and one on the left? Or are they going to be perfectly 
situated perfectly symmetrically next to each other, or are you going to have three and have two on one side and one on the other to offset? I'm a three candlestick person. I, everything I have is, you know, I have to have two over here and one over there. And so that's why I did those flowers alike, but then I did the other two completely different. And that's why you're seeing two here together and then one here by itself and one there by itself. And, you know, trying to, to offset that a little bit. Okay, so now we'll put down our tissue paper flowers. These guys are so great. I just knew when I saw these that that uh, we just had to have some of this. I think I'm going to put the blue up at the top so it can show. And I'm not going to paint it to death because this blue and this orange are going to want to run. So all I'm doing is getting the stuff in place and getting away from it. A matter of fact, I'm just sort of tapping this center here because it's just, it's too easy to smear it all. And you know, purple and yellow make brown. And I don't, I wasn't really planning on brown flowers today. So, you know, See, I'm using my brush to pick that up. Okay. I think this is coming together. I think I really like how this is... I'm liking the watercolory look of the leaves and the, and the, you know, the translucency of this right here. And the more I put on, just the more I like it. So... Yay us. I think so far we're good. Oh, Mert says, oh, Deborah says more interesting. Oh, you're talking about the candlestick thing? Mert says those blue leaves really pop with the jar. Yeah, it, it's, it just, you know, do we really have blue leaves? No, not really. But who cares? This is our art. We're doing it the way we want. So, you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put the top secret stuff away for a minute and sorry sip of water okay now this stuff now this stuff is really thick and it dries pretty fast sometimes about as fast as you put something down it's already starting to dry on top so if you try to revisit it, it gets all clumpy. So you have to be mindful um, of how you apply this stuff. And I only use it really for things like fabric or like this watercolor paper is, is pretty rigid. So this will really help this to stay where we, you know, the way we want it. I'm going to do the fabric first, I think. And... It's going to be interesting because I've already got, oh, let's see what brush, I want to use this brush because I've already got some glue and water right here, but I think I can, wasn't it right about there? Yeah. Now, this green could bleed through to this fabric, and that's a chance we're going to take. If it does it too much and it bothers me, I can paint over it or pull it back off or whatever but I'm I'm gonna plan on not letting it bother me okay <laughs> okay that is not where I want it so in a case like that look gently you pull that back up I want to sh shift it I want it to be this way. I want it to cover this blank space, this blank space, 
and not cover our pretty flower that we just put down. So there's a lot of glue and glue and water and it's very sticky. And what I'm doing is just taking my finger and reminding this fabric where I want it. And I think I have green. Yeah, see that green on my brush? So I don't want to paint on top of that because it came from that tissue paper. So I'm going to clean my brush and time to, uh, now I can put this stuff, the heavy um, matte gel medium, on top of the fabric. And if I stay out of the tissue paper that's all around it, for the most part, it should adhere and be just fine. This is a bit of a process, you know, constructing <laughs> this bouquet. It's it's a layering thing and it's a thinking thing and you have to wait in between some things and let it all dry. Um, it's not what I call rapid fire art. <laughs> it's just, uh, but you know, the end result is the kind of thi thing that when people see it, they want to touch it. And I had the gallery director tell me once, she says, well, people were trying to touch your art. And I told them, no, don't touch the art. And I said, oh, no, no, no. With my stuff, if they want to reach out and touch the art, that's a compliment. That's what I want. I want them to be compelled to do. So you don't have to stop people from touching my art. And she was like, well, still. I said, no, no, no. I really mean that. I, I'm sincere in that because it's if you're compelled to touch it, that means you're enjoying the depth and the texture and the whole, you know, it's pretty cool. So, was this flower right about here? I think it was. But I should turn it a different angle because I had it angled just like the other one. Um, before I leave this flower, let me say that typically I take my brush and run it up this edge, this cut edge, make a little ramp of uh, gel medium. But if I do that now, this wet tissue paper will smear green onto the flower. So I'm going to stop right there and wait and let this stuff dry. And later, I'll come back and make sure this is affixed properly and make sure the edges have a nice coat of this around them. Um, but I did make sure. I used a um, short bristled, fairly strong or rigid brush so I could sit here and actually press down on the fabric and make sure that all of the inside part is completely adhered. Okay, so that's the plan. Also, this stuff, if you if you buy any of this um, gel medium, as you use it, see how I've tended to go down into the middle? If you buy any of this and use it, here's, here's how to make it last. As it goes down, start pulling it off the wall towards the middle. Because if you don't do that, after a time, what you'll have is a hole in the middle. And as you get deeper in the jar, the stuff that's still on the walls will start to dry hard. And all that will be wasted. But if you clean this up and bring it level every time you're done using it. See how it's all one level now? Um... And this is the other thing. If you do that dragon on the edge thing, after a while you're going to get where you can't get this open. So I try not to do that either. But uh, this is how to sort of use and maintain that. Um, just so you know. So glad you asked. <laughs> okay, this is going to go here. So I need to get... And it's not too, too wet. See, I can get all that stuff off my brush right here. Just put a nice coat down so that my flower will, this will be strong enough to hold the flower. That's what we want. And it, it really does dry fast. You, you have to, okay, my brush is not green, so that's a good sign. I think that's it. Maybe it was up a little higher. I think so because I had the I had the big one here, right? 
Okay, so let me just add a little more stuff. I put it in the wrong place. It's okay. It's okay, it's all right. I'm checking for green. If, if I do this on, on the baby wipe and it's green, I'll know that I'm I need to clean my brush, but it's not, it's not really, it's okay. All right, so this one's angled like this, or I should say kind of like that, and I want to make sure it's different. I want it to stand on its own and have a different stance or whatever. Okay, again, fabric is dry, but the underside is wet, and all I'm doing is taking clean fingers, fingers that don't have paint or or die from the bleeding tissue paper. And I'm sort of rubbing and pressing and just making sure this is adhered. Pretty happy with that. Boy, if I drug my brush across that right now, onto this, this would be all turquoise. See, you see what I'm saying about coming back later to that after everything dries. So now I've just put a, a fair amount of stuff on here and I'm just going to work. I'm trying to stay only on top of the fabric. Trying not to, to now, now I can do it here. I can go off of this edge because it's not tissue paper. This won't bleed and run, but the rest of it is. So I've got to be careful, mindful. Have any of you collage with fabric before and did you like it would you do it again did you use this gel medium or something like it or were you satisfied with your results 14 questions curious okay so that fabric is down and you have to be careful too mixing this stuff with the glue and water because they don't tend to like to mix too well. You can put one down and let it dry completely and then do the other. But you should not, like see how this is wet? Try to put some of this on the glue and water. You would be pretty sorry it gets cakey and clumpy. Um, oh yes, Tracy said in your class, yeah, you took that, we did that mixed media class, I remember now. Yes ma'am, okay. And you would do it again? Well, look, any of you that are my Patreon people, don't buy fabric, okay? Call Kelly. <laughs> because really, you know, you don't need but little scraps. And I have a ton, T-O-N ton of fabric here. And I'm getting ready to give some to Deb and some to Carol. Carol's out in um, Aberdeen, Washington. She moved out there from Silva, North Carolina, and she's out there quilting, doing little fun little projects. And um, I said, oh, good Lord, girl, I made over 300 masks and I saved almost all of the solid fabric scraps. And, and uh, I have so many little, oh, I just have so much. Let me know if anybody needs fabric. I really need to get rid of, because I use this very little bit and that's it. So, uh, Tracy, that's where we met. That's right. Do, do, do. Thanks for reminding me, because you know I've slept since then and my memory is just <laughs> is terrible. Oh, hi, Audrey. Audrey says, I've collaged with fabric. Use gel medium. The fabric tends to dry very stiff, but I like the outcome. Cool. Cool. Well, you know, I guess it needs to be stiff. If we're going to put it on art and, and sell it to the public, um, it needs to be well adhered, you know. Okay, this is pretty, pretty oh, dry. I was not on wet tissue paper. So see how I'm ramping up these edges? I call it ramping up. I'm sort of dragging my brush up the edge so it makes a little ramp of, of matte gel. And now you can kind of smooth that out. And, you know, this will probably take another coat of that, so I'll come back and make sure my edges are great when I'm a little later. But right now, I'm just, for the sake of, just want to make sure. And you can push down 
like if you've got thick cardboard you can push down on each of these petals to make sure they're not trying to roll up and then you can smooth it out oops Just smooth it out. And if you leave a bump or a ridge with this stuff, when it dries, it'll be a bump or a ridge, and you will know it's there. So you want to make sure sure you get a visual, um, perhaps even looking at it sideways to make sure there's no bumps or ridges that are going to interfere with your... Um, not you, Bonnie. That's the only thing you haven't done with fabric. You've done some... You guys, Bonnie's my friend who's like, she she just sews and sews and sews and she's amazing and I'm surprised. We need to get you into this, Bonnie. <laughs> okay, so here's my middle of this flower and I'm going to put, it's already got the matte gel on it. So I'm going to just stick that where I want it. That looks good. And there's nothing on top of this that will run. All of this is acrylic paint, so I should be fine just to, just to put the some more gel uh, medium on it and just I'm ramping up the edges see if I sell art to somebody and they pay a, you know good money for it I don't want it to come apart on them I want it to be light fast and I want it to be you know um, I want it to be quality work with quality materials and supplies and I want I want it to hold up the test of time. Now, I will say, I've said this before in other demos, but I'll say it right now. This bleeding tissue paper is acid-free, okay? But it's not fade-resistant or fade-proof or light-fast. So you have to treat your art with tissue paper with some kind of a varnish that has UV protectant in it, okay? Otherwise, you this could be completely faded in years. I mean, I don't know how long it would take a long time, but still, just saying. Okay, so this guy, I should have taken a picture. Well, I couldn't, but I guess that's where he'll go. I feel like they're not exactly where I had them, but I couldn't take a picture because I'm using my camera to record. And this is going to overlap that flower a little bit. Oh, well. Flowers do that in bouquets, right? Now I have to stay out of this. This is wet, and it's glue and water, and it's tissue paper. So that's like turquoise paint, okay? you got to get that mindset. you got to be aware of, of what's around what you're putting down. And you got to be really careful. Because you're going to be like, oh, man. <laughs> All this work and uh, so if nothing else for now just do the tops you know and you can come back and catch those edges later when it's dry okay don't worry about see I can do it right up to there because that's fabric and that's fabric but this part mm -mm, no no bueno no touchy okay all right so now let's put the we can put the center of the flower on this one it's gonna go right here so oh, i need to trim that hang on it needs to be a little bit i curved it so it's curved like the flower okay that's so cute i like it i'm just putting it on slathering it on very generously and i will get that edge later and I'm just trying to smooth it back out. Ramp up those edges. Okay. That looks pretty smooth, pretty good. Can live with that. Okay, now I need to put the center of these flowers down. And that is tissue paper. And I'm still using the heavy medium. But I think... I'm basically going to just stick it down and then I'll come back in a minute with a maybe a softer brush. I'm kind of liking this, you guys. Okay. 
yeah, I want what I can do is take this stuff that's on my brush and I can get a little um I'm gonna use this jar lid. I need a little palette. Okay, see this is a jar that I finished yesterday. And see how there's a little bit of that stuff dried right there on the inside? That's where I didn't clean it when I got finished. I didn't pull it down, but most of it's clean and I really didn't waste a whole lot. So I was pretty pleased with that. Since we were just talking about it, but I'm gonna use this lid as a palette right here. So what I wanna do is take a little of this and a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna thin this down just a little. Okay, so I'm just thinning it. Oh, I may have gotten it too thin, that's okay. It's a little clumpy, so you have to, you know, you have to work with it, but it's okay. This is all I need to put on that orange flower center because it's just little tissue paper, okay? Um, it doesn't need, if I try to, to use the heavy gel to fix these orange middles to these flowers, it will tear the paper. The paper is so thin and so fragile, I just need to, you know, and I don't want to mix glue and water with with the gel medium. So that's why I'm using watered down gel medium. Okay, so now look at my brush. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> so it's time to clean the old brush before we do anything else. Cause, and you could use a baby wipe like this. Look, see I've already, I've pretty much gotten it all, gotten most of the orange out. If you wanna be sure, you can put it in the water. Buy stock and baby wipes, guys. Deb says the orange center has made it pop. I think so. It's it's a bunch of really great happy colors. I'm um I'm pleased so far. It looks even better than I thought it would, but now we need something there. And we didn't that's it. We didn't do anything else. So now what are we gonna do? Oh dear dear dear. Well, I can show you a little trick. Let's put the lid on this. Now, here's another thing. If you're going to buy it, this is expensive. You need to know how to take care of it. I have water in this bottle. And I, before I close this up most days, I just missed it two or three times. And that also keeps it from sort of getting hard around the edges. And make sure your lid's on tight. It doesn't have to be marine tight. Just, just make sure it's not askew and make sure that it's snug. Okay, so here's my... Oh, they're not in there. Wait a minute. This is touching on a whole new technique, but I drew a bunch of flowers, wackadoodle flowers with Posca on tissue paper. And I could easily take some of these guys and put them down and we can, um, use them to like these are supposed to be like little buttercups so um and because they're on white paper when i put them down it's it's not like um i don't have to cut them out to the edge because the white tissue paper basically goes away so what you see is what i drew it's like it's sort of like a tattoo of a drawing or something you can draw stuff in advance and have it on file, and then you can put it down in your picture and paint it later. So let me show you how that works. Um, I think we are back to glue and water now. Okay. And I always close my stuff marine tight. <laughs> I can't get it open. Hang on. <clears throat> okay. All right, so. A little bit of this, a little dab will do you, right? I can drag my brush a little because it's because it's uh, clean. I want to do it inside. I don't want this to get gluey if I can avoid it. All right, so this is sort of a little buttercup type flower. And I think we could, where would we want to put one of those? Let's see. We, we can let a couple of them hang out on the edges. 
How about right here? Okay, so there's glue and water. Again, be careful when you're mixing these two, the glue and water and the gel medium because they're just, they don't play well. Okay, so see, glue and water, put that down and look, it's like I just drew it in there. Isn't that cool? This is something I just figured out this week. I'll do another video on this, but I like it. I like it a lot. And if you're doing mixed media, then hey, there you go. Okay, now I didn't put white behind that. And you see how it's the green, see how the green makes that darker? Like we were talking about earlier. So the, so the tissue paper is very translucent and you need to account for that. Let's see, do we need a wackadoodle flower in the middle? Maybe. Since it's the last thing we're going to put on, we can put it on there and then come back later and paint it. And it'll be okay. So, I'm thinking maybe... Uh, thanks, Mert. Mert says she loves these. I'm thinking maybe this one or that one. I kind of like that one. It's kind of like the others, but just different enough. What do you say? Let's go for it. And all I have to do is get in there to it. I probably should sit and cut these away from each other so that I'll have them ready. But I was thinking, well, yeah, but they're easier to keep up with this way. And it's easier to see what I have. Um, after today's demo, this these little sketches and drawings and things of flowers and whatnot are all going to get put into this box that I showed you at the beginning of the video. They'll they'll be in there with that. And oh, I did I did Easter eggs, and oh, you know, look here's a car. We could put a car in the vase, <laughs> or a moo, I got a moo cow or something in here somewhere. Anyway, that's enough silliness. Okay, so this could go right here. Woohoo! I think I like that. What do y'all think? You think we should try it? Should we try? And it's pretty wet with glue and water. And I'm going to just put a little bit of glue and water down. And just put this down. And what it's going to do is just look like I drew it there. Because the white's going to, the tissue paper's going to kind of go away. No car. <laughs> man and then later I can come in here oh it did show up there but that's okay I can come in here and paint this flower or use um, my Posca's this will saturate and these edges will kind of disappear a little bit later it's okay it's all right. So this truly is mixed media. We've got fabric. We've got tissue paper. We've got watercolor paper. We've got cardstock. We've got Posca marker drawn elements. Isn't that something? Okay, let's let's put a couple more of these itty bitty flowers in because they're they're pretty and they're quick. And I think they'll add a lot to it. And I can cut them out right here. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for now. It is fun, Tracy, but you know, I need to put the paint away for a day and clean my house. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. You need to do your chores, but I want to paint. You know, it's like that conversation with myself. You painted yesterday. Go clean your room. I don't want to. My 12-year-old in herself. Okay. So I'm just trimming these up. We're going to stick them on too. And... Do -do 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 -do. Just trimming off these little edges a little bit okay 
little bit more of that glue and water. And, okay, here's the candlestick thing. You know, got to have some here and some there. So, uh, now these are all different. So that's neat. They're not exactly the same. I like that. And I think we could put one. We have one here, so we could put have two over here somehow. How about right there? And of course, I'll have to come back later and draw a little, draw or paint little like stems, you know, for them to, they got to come from somewhere. They can't just be hanging out on top of the jar. So have to add stems later, but um, I mean, that's fine. And doo -doo 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 -doo. where else can we put? I don't want it to be like like a pattern. I want it to look organic. I want to put a couple of them kind of close together as they would happen, as it would happen in a in a bouquet of flowers. Right? But isn't that fun? So you can draw stuff with a, a fine Posca pen on white or colored tissue paper and then add it to your thing later. I think that's really cool. Now, we got to have one down in here somewhere. There needs to be one inside. They're all on top now. See, now I'm hating myself because I got them all on top. Let's put one right here. That'll work. Okay. Is there anything else in here we need to put on there? It's 11.16. I need to not keep you here all day. We may not finish this today either. You know, we may revisit this next week. I will do it until we get the thing done. And then I'll sell it for a million dollars. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's see here. Down, 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 down. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven flowers, eight, nine, ten, well, twelve flowers, really. Um, do we really need anything else? Do we need any other leaves or flowers? What do y'all think? You guys are my, you're my, uh, you know, you're my brainstormers. I don't honestly have much room for another flower. It's kind of full, and when I get in here, see how that black stands out? When I get in here with my Posca and I do some outlines and stuff, it's going to be, they'll all be more like this. You'll be able to, um, you'll be able to, there'll be some more contrast. And the other flowers, because right now the glue is wet and these white ones are kind of disappearing and that kind of thing. So later when it's dry and I come back and do my embellishments with, with the, uh, you know, Posca markers or paint or whatever, that will change. That will improve greatly. And I think you'll you'll see a big difference the next time you look at that. I did a lot of Easter eggs. I may need to do an Easter picture somehow. I don't know why, because really, who wants an Easter picture? I don't. Here's an abstract. Here's a butterfly. I don't know where the I had an animal. It was a horse or something. I don't know where it went. But anyway, get all those together. Okay. I pulled this out because I really liked it. Is there anywhere for this? Is this just still too much? What do y'all think? I think it's pretty, but I think it's, unless I've made this to look like a placemat or something under the jar right here, how long will it take to dry completely, Merch says. Um, well, if I, I'm trying to hold it up here to the light so you can see how wet it is. It's not, um, the gel medium like right here is already dry. Um, this is, I put a lot of glue and water on that. And it's going to take it a little bit. Um, and you see how, see how the edges of this flower look like they're out of focus? 
That's because I put a lot of glue and water. If you put a lot, the edges disappear, the tissue paper. It's not a clear, precise line. Um, the more glue and water you put down, the fuzzier your outlines, your edges will be. And I did put a little bit too much down. I see I got an air bubble here too under this tissue paper. So I'm going to, I'm going to take my, um, I probably should dip that just in water. I'm going to try to smooth that out because we can't really have an air bubble in there. Ooh, there's a lot of goop under there. Okay. You got to be careful. I mean, you know, it's a, because now what we've got is orange and blue and purple, and it, it would be easy to uh, mess this up and, and just have a big brown flower. <laughs> you know, so you gotta be kind of careful. Could you make it into a ribbon to tie around the neck of the jar? Um, we could. We could. I don't... I don't know if it's a viable suggestion, but I don't know. I think it would be too much up at the top. I was trying to bring something down here visually. Deb says, I don't know what it is, but the neck of the jar seems bare. Maybe needs a shadow from the flowers. Oh yeah, it will. It'll come. That's the, that's like the last, all those things, the details um, or something. Maybe the podcast later will do something. <laughs> I, everything in here, even though these are made up flowers and whatnot, the, everything that is in here is going to cast a shadow like this did. Everything, I'm going to have a light source and everything will, um, Posca, <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> um, so everything that is here is going to cast a shadow of some sort, but I have to get like these things adhered and at first, um, Mert, to answer your question, how long it will take it to dry, um, I could leave this and go make lunch and do some chores, and, and it would probably, you know, an hour or two. If I, if I set it next to my heater over there, it'll dry even faster. But now, the glue and water, if you take the glue and water part and then you, you like, put it, take a hairdryer to it or something... Um, you're going to have a problem because what it does is it makes it crackle. You know what I'm talking about? And I know you don't want your... I know you don't want... Well, if you want cr the crackled antique look, that's fine. But, um, but you probably don't want to take the hair dryer to this to, to get it to hurry up. So Now, you can use the hair dryer to blow on this if you use the cool setting and there's no heat. The heat is what makes it crackle. So you could use the air dryer on cool, no heat at all, and just blow or put it in front of a fan or something, and it will dry a little bit faster. But, um, yeah, so it, it takes a little time. And um, I think what I'll do is we'll end this. We're going on, on an hour and a half. That's long enough for everybody. What I will do is, is let this dry. I'll do some more work on it, and then... Next week, we'll either finish it or I'll show you the finished piece and tell you what I did. Okay. Um, I'm going to think about that, Merc. Um, I was just thinking if if this was under here kind of like this, if it looked like something on the table, it might be very pretty. You know, like like around the jar. Like, mm. Does that make sense? It sort of ties in with, I would cut it so that, so that it fits the silhouette of the jar and it would look like a placemat or something, you know? That, or I had this out earlier to show you guys. You know, you can also take stuff like this. I found this this morning. You can cut it in half and put it down. It would look kind of like this. And you can put stuff like that in your paintings. Um, all you have to do is use the heavy gel medium to, to fix it. It's really fun. It's really fun to take scrap stuff that you have and, and, you know, people aren't expecting to see a real 
piece of crochet in there so that could be kind of fun and you could curve it you know if it were a little bigger I might have thought about it but and to me I don't know this this can look kind of modern day you know but this takes it back to Grandmaville which I'm not knocking Grandmaville I am one but I'm just saying it takes it back to a different place and time and I don't think we need to go there so okay um well, I hope, I hope y'all learned something. I hope it's, uh, I hope it's been fun. Um, maybe what I will do this week is get these flowers like they need to be white, the priming. I'll get the, the gel medium here where it needs to be and, you know, maybe get them colored. And then maybe next week I can finish this up with, um, showing you how I outline and make the water show. Enhance this. You can't see the water now like you could. And I need to put shadows on the stems and, and there needs to be a highlight on the jar. Um, this needs to be a little deeper. So there's, there's stuff. And that's the last stuff that we'll do. So I might just sort of get the flowers done, get them painted, and then you guys can be with me while I outline and finish. And you can see my process and maybe you can get something from it. I'm in love with these. I really, really like these. As your tissue paper dries, you want to look at it and make sure there's no big bubbles. There's a bubble in that flower, which I can sort of press down here and remind it what I want it to do. Um, you have to keep an eye on it as it dries. Even the, even the gel medium, you have to go back with your finger or something and press it down a little bit and just say, uh-uh, get back in there, do your job, you know. Um, and you can press down with different things. You just, it just depends on how wet it is and how bad the bubble is or whatever. So, okay. I want to thank you all for being here with me today. I think this will be really cute when we get it finished. And I say we because it has been a team effort. I've enjoyed it, and I've enjoyed your input, and I hope you'll join me next week for the final, <laughs> the final on this. We'll get it, we'll get it finished and move on to something else, okay? All right. Well, I hope everybody has a fabulous weekend. I know I will. Um, I'm going to just enjoy, um, it was like 40-something yesterday. It was like a heat wave. <laughs> Oh, Deb says, great demo, very informative. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Tracy says, love it. Mert says, fun demo. Can't wait to see it all done. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. Um, this is some stuff that I haven't done in a long time. And this I've done, I've never done before. This, you know, with the the little tissue paper thing. So that's a new thing for me. And I'm I'm having a lot of fun with that. So... I appreciate y'all letting me explain to you what I'm doing. All right. Well, happy Friday. And um, I'm going to scoot. Y'all be in touch. I'll talk to you later.